Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's get started. Hi, I'm Anna. This is my mom. And today I am going to be explaining special relativity. Oh, it's so special. <laughs> special relativity is like, it's the theory of how things behave at very high speeds. More like bullets or more like spaceships? Or planets? Like f faster than that. Comets, light? Light, yes, like light. And the reason why special relativity is so cool is because it's like, it starts with two very basic ideas, and then those ideas imply these like crazy truths about the universe. The two postulates are one, um, the laws of physics are the same in all inertial frames of reference. That means that if you're in a train, that's moving extremely fast. It doesn't matter how fast, like 20 miles an hour, 200 miles an hour, or like three fifths the speed of light. If all the windows are closed and you can't see outside, there's no way for you to tell that you're in a train. Oh, I see what you mean. Barring any kind of bumpy interference from outside, mm -hmm. the experience of riding in the New York Metro is about the same as the experience of riding on the bullet train to Tokyo. You're basically just riding in a train. One of them's going much faster, but it's the same. There's, yeah, there's no way for you to tell absolutely what speed you're going. To you, you're never moving in your own frame of reference. Yes, I don't know that I'm zooming through space. I just think I'm not moving. You never think you're moving. Okay. You just think everyone else is moving. Right. But there, like, there's no sense that you're right and they're wrong. You just have a different frame of reference. Ah. The only, the only exception is like the reason why I say inertial frame of reference mm -hmm. is because you have to be moving at a constant velocity for this to be true. So if you're in a train that's speeding up, you can tell. Because you feel the pressure. You feel the pressure. The laws of physics are not the same because there's this force pushing, pushing you back that you can't explain. The second postulate is that light, always, light in a vacuum always travels at sea, regardless of the frame. The reason why this is kind of a weird idea is because if you're if you're in a train moving at 20 miles an hour, mm -hmm. I guess it's kind of slow for a train. If you're in a train moving at 50 miles an hour and you have a baseball and you throw it at like, what's the speed people throw baseballs at? Uh, top pitchers clock out around 85 or 90 miles right. an hour. Let's say that you're throwing your baseball at 90 miles an hour then exactly. in, your, in a 50 mile an hour train. So in your frame, that baseball is moving at 90 miles an hour. But in fact, it's moving 90 plus the 50 that in, the train's already going. Well, in my frame, if I'm on the ground watching. Ah, I see. So in your frame, the baseball's moving at 90 miles an hour. In my frame, it's moving 50 plus 90 miles an hour. I'm saying that if you're in a train with a flashlight and you turn it on, you're sent, like turning on a flashlight, you're essentially throwing photons forwards at sea. Okay. So since I'm on the ground and you seem to be moving at 50 miles an hour and then you start throwing photons forward at sea. They should be going C plus 50. Right but they just move at sea. In my frame and your frame. Ah. But the, the reason why he proposed this is because around that time in science, physicists were thinking about the fact that light is a wave, or it, it seemed to travel as a wave. They figured out that light travels at sea. Mm-hmm but they didn't know about special relativity. So they thought it can't travel at sea in every frame because like I was saying, if you're on a train and you turn on the light, the light should be traveling at sea plus train speed with respect to the ground. Right. So then what frame does light travel at sea in? All other waves that we knew about, like sound and water, have a medium that they propagate through. Sound travels with its own characteristic speed with respect to the air. So by analogy, light should travel at its characteristic speed with respect to the light traveling medium, which they called the luminiferous ether. The luminiferous ether was this like very mysterious medium that had to like permeate through all space. <laughs> Well, no, people took this really seriously. Oh, I'm sure. There, there were experiments <laughs> to detect the luminiferous ether, like so, like so many. And just like time and time again, they could not find any evidence of this medium that light should be traveling through. Because it's not there. Um, and so they're like, 
you know, trying really hard to find this frame that light should be traveling at sea in. And that's when Einstein came along and said, you know. There is no frame. May, yeah, well, maybe there is no medium light travels through. Maybe it just travels at sea so in see every frame. And peep. Those are the two postulates of special relativity. One, no inertial frame is better than any other inertial frame. Two, light always travels at sea. Okay. Do you buy them? Do you believe them? Sure. <laughs> okay. So now there are some really, really weird results. I like weird results. 